Well, I got interested in Turkish music um, because, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a music lover. Um, I consider myself more of a music student than a music professional or, or artist. Um, for many years, all my life, uh, I've been just learn, traveling to different cultures and, and, and interested in, in learning their music and knowing more about their culture. So obviously, uh, I was bound to, to, to come to Turkey and live, there for a, live, live here for a while and, and, and learn the music. Turkish music is, a, is the, the sound that represents the, the Turkish people and the Turkish culture. That's what it is for me. Besides that, uh, obviously, yeah, in, we can find different types of Turkish music, like folk music, uh, traditional, classical, yeah. Uh, not to mention modern styles, but, but what I, personally what I attracts me more is like the real Turkish sound, which is to be found, especially in the classical Turkish music. And the world of Makam, which is uh, the musical system, to so-call it, uh, where this music is based, um, and this world is quite deep uh, and quite interesting, you know, it's one of the eldest traditions of music that is still in use today. In, and it's also shared by many other cultures, so it's not only a way of knowing about Turkish, uh, um, but also about the relation of them with other cultures, which is quite, a, quite an interesting thing. Classical Turkish music is especially done in Istanbul and we had in Ottoman times we had a lot of nations living in this Istanbul and they are uh, adding their own flavors, own uh, tastes on this music and this music especially done in Istanbul. In Ottoman Empire they have also folk music but um, they are not, not in the making in the in Istanbul part so we can say it's a Istanbul music composed by different different nations. Well, before I studied Turkish music, I studied Arabic makam, which is in a way similar, not the same, but similar. And one interesting thing is that living in, 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 in an Arab country when I was studying there, uh, one comment that came many times was that uh, many musicians, many Arabic musicians told me, OK, if you're really interested in, in makam music, you should definitely go to Turkey and study there too, because uh, they are different than us, but they actually, they were very good at keeping the, the musical tradition and, and really at teaching you the subtleties and, and, and preserving their, their musical culture, yeah? So this really inspired me to, to also come to Turkey and, and study. Makam is like, a, for me, it's like a cooking. Putting different, different uh, flavors inside, different pentacles, and you make a new uh, taste. So this is makam. It is uh, shared by, for instance, the Arabic uh, traditions, which sound is different, styles are different, but, but they share a lot of basic rules, which has nothing to do with European music or music in, in the Americas. Um, also, in a way, you find certain similarities or approaches in, in Persian music, in the Dasgat and Radif tradition. Um, and maybe to, to an extent, uh, you'll find certain things in, in, a, less de in a lesser degree, in, in maybe Indian music, for instance, you know, certain approaches and certain uh, behaviors uh, from the way you make music and things like that. But then this is already like getting farther from, from the actual Turkish music. Usul is a pattern to uh, make the music flow. I mean, in the s first usul is a, you make, a, in the silence, you make a pattern of when you will hit the notes and also the 
how you will hit the notes. It's defining these patterns. And when you play with bender or some other uh, percussion instruments, uh, all the orchestra know the, this pattern. And also the audience can understand the music uh, very, they can understand it by this pattern. So every music has an usul, uh, of course, but Turkish music, in Turkish classical music, there's very high level and uh, much more usuls in it, much more patterns. Turkish guitar, well, um, it's quite an interesting phenomenon, you know, it's been, it's been a while uh, it's been out for a while that different mus uh, Turkish musicians try to play their music for, for guitar. It's not like a very popular theme, but uh, uh, it's very interesting in, in many ways. First thing is the relationship between the, the oud and the guitar. You know, they are pretty much related. And, and second thing is because uh, when you try to play Turkish music with a guitar, you find certain barriers that are, at the beginning, they might throw you off, like make you stop, but after a while they are very interesting things, you know, because you always discover that on the guitar you can play so many styles. So for instance, in, in, in Turkish music you have a, what they call commas, commas or microtones, you know, these are like some notes, some sounds that are not in a, in a Western instrument. So, for instance, the first thing that people started doing was to use fretless guitars, like guitars with no frets, you know, just to play the guitar like if it was an oud to reach these notes. Um, there is all kind of things. There are great musicians in Turkey. Uh, there is an artist from Istanbul that made also a guitar with putting the frets in different places, you know. Um, for instance, I started with fretless guitar then I also made another guitar with all these microtonal frets. And even now, after going through so much, I went back to the beginning to find out the most simple thing, which was to tune your normal, your Spanish guitar in a different way, so you could have those microtones available without having to have a different type of guitar, you know. quite a thing that I couldn't do at the beginning, even though I had the guitar, but I have to go through all this learning and, and experimenting to really come to something as simple as this. But uh, it's quite happy news because that means, you know, you don't have to have a special guitar to play this music, but now this wonderful music, music is available to um, basically any guitar player around the world. The way he's playing with the guitar is also make me excited because he's not only playing the fretless guitar, he also has some different tunings on a normal guitar. It sounds like, like great, like a normal guitar, like a flamenco guitar, Spanish guitar, but also I can hear, because of the different tuning, I can hear my commas and microtones that I used here. So I think it's, it has some really different uh, in, uh, discoveries and good things. He is using still his uh, guitar capabilities and normal guitar playing things and it is changing Turkish music also and that's, that's all we want and not, not uh, play the same thing, De try to develop it. Do something that's coming out uh, inside and he, he do it for me, very uh, el elegant way. <laughs>
I was affected by Turkish classical music because it has a, like a very big, rich and heritage from the Ottoman Empire. So this music is maybe created and not maybe developed for like 600 years and it has a, like a big amount of uh, treasure when I was like uh, maybe 15 years old. And I see and I listen, try to listen with this Tamburi Jimmy Bay CDs. Because I was hearing from the, some maybe newspaper, like an advertisement. Okay, who is this guy? I need to listen. And I go and buy CDs and listen. And also there was a, a guy in my um, place uh, who is playing tambur. And one time I go there and I listen and I fall in love, the sound of it, firstly. And I said, I want to play. What surprised me in classical Turkish music was that the um, first thing is it's a, a melodic world, musical world. Like in Western music, everything is based on what we call like vertical movements, like chords and a lot of sounds together, you know, to make something massive. Whereas in the, like many oriental traditions in Turkish music is more melodic, where you can do so much with so little and you really get the most out of the list. So this is one thing. Um, and second is like, the more you learn about it, the more you open up, like your, your senses open up, your hearing opens up to many subtleties in music, in feelings, in your spiritual uh, state also, as, as you get more in tune with the music. Well, I learned uh, Turkish classical music. Uh, how did I learn it? Uh, by, by listening first a lot. Second, by trying to, to find good teachers. In, in my personal case, I was very lucky that uh, I, I, I got to study with many wonderful Turkish uh, artists like uh, Murat Aydemir, who is a, a tambour player and a wonderful musician, a wonderful teacher especially, because it's not an easy music to explain. Uh, my, one of my Turkish music idols in the Oud, uh, how, uh, who is, was and is uh, uh, Mr. Yurdal uh, Tokshan. Um, also, I started with other musicians. I got to spend some time also with even with Erkan Ogur, who I found he was like a, a beautiful human being. I mean, I, and we shared so much because he was not only Turkish, but and played Turkish music, but also he was so in love with the guitar, so I could relate so much with him, yeah. Um, and then many other teachers, you know, even with, uh, with uh, Rose Daly too, I got to, to study with him and also a great, uh, great teacher and a person that really made me uh, understand many things that are so difficult to explain, yes, because it happens in music that many times you get caught up in books and theories and, 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 and you forget that the first thing is playing. And all these teachers is one thing they really get to do is, is to really that to be the music, play the music and and theory is important and, and it's good to know but but music is first. <laughs> Fernando is a really different guy who is playing different, different kind of music. For me, when I first met her, him, I thought that, no, he cannot play all the music, so Turkish music. Let's start. But I was not really expecting him to play like very good. Because after we start to play, I re realized him that he's playing, okay, but also he's adding something. He has like, he understands, he plays but he also has more 
things to. This is what I want actually, because I don't want to repeat the same Turkish music with him. But he's also um, getting the music, digesting it, and create a new thing. So this is what I really excited with them, Fernando. And also, the working experience is also very hardworking. He's a very hardworking guy and a good friend. Uh, I'm very happy to play with a guy that I really respect. And also, better than that, to be a friend with a guy really. I thought that in the beginning uh, he may not play all the musics, actually, because it's not easy to play everything all over the world. Everybody who plays something uh, and interested in other cultures music, every musician has some dream that uh, I can play that. Uh, Even if it's a very difficult job, I think he can he can do he can do. I think this is unbelievable for me. When I go to first Fernando's uh, concert, I see all of them. And I was shocked, how can it be, how can it be possible like that? He uh, not only played that music, also he, he put something on it and he plays some his compositions. That makes me very exciting about that. I hope he will be more, more, more successful <laughs> by that way. My experience in Turkey was quite positive, you know. Um, Turkish, first thing, Turkish people are very, how can I say, they're very cozy. Like, uh, uh, they are very open, they are very friendly. So, of course, you find good and bad like in any other place. But in general, uh, at least my personal experience has been very positive. First, of, of from first day, making a lot of friends. People, even Turkish people, I, I've known for many years and, and, and really it's a friendship that, that only can grow up, yeah? Um, second, the type of culture uh, and the surroundings, the way of doing things is, is quite uh, easy going. Like in other countries, in other cultures, uh, uh, they are a little bit more rough or, or more difficult. They are closer cultures, you know. And, but in Turkey, obviously, it's not like the most open culture, but it's not those close ones, you know, like when you go and live in China or India or any other place, yeah? So um, already this, which is the first thing, always the people in, in the place. And second, because of the music, which is always what, what really gets me going through everything, it made the whole experience quite, quite a pleasant one and quite a positive one. Mm -hmm.